Good morning and welcome to church. Welcome to the Covenant Nation. It is a beautiful morning, always a beautiful day. Oh, yes. Here in the city yes. of Lagos, it is indeed the day the Lord has made, and we are here rejoicing, you know, appreciating and blessing the name of the Lord for his goodness in our lives. We're here again, gathered together to worship, and we're glad that you have made the choice to join us for worship today. If this is your first time of joining us here at the Covenant Nation, it is the right choice. Yes. You're in the right place, at the right time, with the right people. <laughs> and we want to get to know you better. So if you would, kindly go to our website at www.insightforliving.org forward slash new to church. There's a form there that you can feel, share your comments, share your experience, and somebody will get in touch with you. Yes, definitely. But more than that, if you are anywhere near your Covenant Nation campus, Please come in and feel the warmth of the Covenant Nation. We will invite you in to fellowship with us. And that is to say, we have campuses All over. everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> everywhere, we believe it. We're expanding and we're going everywhere. Right now, all over the city of Lagos, other parts of Nigeria, we have in the UK, we have in Canada, and in New York, in the US. So, yes, and more centers will open. Just keep your eyes open, your ears filled. It just might be a center opening close, close, to you. close to you. Check our website <laughs> and you find those dead centers. My name is Omlara Williams. It's a delight to be with you this morning. And I'm Oluwashio Adeosho. Pleasure being a host to you this morning. All right. Okay. So hmm, we had an exciting week this past week, didn't yes, we? Yes, we did. We had a pastor's wow. conference. But you see, considering the fact that we're all children of God and we have an assignment and a calling, mm. It, is, it was a meeting for everyone, for all of us, Indeed. right, to understand um, the principles of Christianity and keeping Christianity alive, alive. In, in our nation forever on the surface of the earth. And we talked about it. The theme of the conference was um, building bridges. It's about building bridges across generations, generations. involving the young people, in the work of the ministry. Now, that sounds kind of, kind of, mm. right? It's not <laughs> involving them in the things of God, yes. in the work of the kingdom. And for me, it speaks to the family before even the church, right? Yes, because it, the family is that unit that God has created originally for, you know, that initial set of yeah. fellowship to happen. And so as you build, and you know, in families, you have what you call culture that, that yeah. transcends generation. Mm -hmm. If something is broken, if a generation does not understand the culture, then it is lost. Yeah. And it's the same thing when we come, when we talk about, you know, this, our Christian yeah. believing, our kingdom, where, where we are. Yeah. You know, there must be that continuity. Yeah. There must be that, when you pass that knowledge from one generation to, 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 another. A, to another, just yeah. get them involved. The same way you get, you know, individuals in a family involved in what's going on in that family. So it's, it, it, it's quite important. So we had Pastor Howe and Pastor Leah yes. from the Heart of God Church in Singapore. If you've been part of our previous pastors' conferences, you'd have probably heard about them. But they were here live and they, are, they, they talk about generations. They are really deep into involving young people in the things of God, showing young people how to be involved in the things of God and serving God even from a young age. Jesus did that, so every child should be able to do that. All right, they're just following the example of our Lord. So, um, and then we also had pa um, Pastor Godman Akinabi from the Elevation Church um, all over the city of Lagos and beyond. And um, all the messages are up on our YouTube channel. Please go find them. You will find them very instructive, very enlightening, very impactful, transformational, and a life-changing experience you would have when you listen to these messages. It's important, particularly if you work with young people, if you have a church, if you have a passion for Christianity to remain on the surface of this earth, that more souls should be won into the kingdom of God. And for if you, wherever you are in the world, look at the percentage of your youth. In Nigeria, more than half our population is youth, and that is very important. Mm -hmm. And it's also a way, person, um, how to talk about something. If you want to change our society, you change the young people. Yeah. And the, the one way is to put the laws of God in their heart. The Bible says that when the law, God says he writes his law in our heart, and we do not need another person to teach us yes. what to do. And you need, you need that. So we need to expose everyone to God to have that done. And then 
the Bible instructs us that we should teach our children. You talk to the Israelites, you teach them on the wayside, everywhere. Write it on, the, on your doorpost, everything. You're supposed to teach the laws of God to your children. When they grow up. When they grow up, yes, they, will they won't depart from it. I remember last week, back, Pastor Tucker was like, they may deviate, but they will they not will depart. depart. If anything happens, they will come back. They will always come back. So go, go find those messages. Now, to our Bible study this morning. We have a little time, but we're going to be discussing something interesting. Um, we've, been, we've been having some practical sessions, discussing case scenario, and um, let me hand over to you in a couple of sentences. Let's <laughs> give a summary so we can okay, so discuss it's, this. It's about a lady called Susan. She mm -hmm. works in a she works in a beauty um, industry, and it was, she was she got introduced to it by a friend called Debbie. Sometimes they, they come together, you know. Um, um, during lunch periods just to gist and talk about things. Um, but uh, when Susan joined the organization, she noticed that there were certain ethical issues that was prevalent within the organization, like people, you know, doing business on company's time, um, uh, people gaming the timing, check timeout system, and, and all of that. And um, in her mind, she felt this is not right and something should be done. You know, so um, she she discussed with her friend. Her friend didn't really see much, you know, difference about it because obviously she was also a bit involved in some of the some of the practices that um, Susan was concerned about, you know. And um, and well, the excuse then was, look, we need this to survive, you know, beyond what the company is paying. You know, so we need this extra income in order to be able to to get by. Um, so. The dilemma for Susan is, what do I do with this information I have? Do I report it? Um, in spite of all that is going on, I also have financial needs. Yeah. What do I also do? Do I also get into you know, a personal practice just to, just to make ends meet? You know, so that's the, which, yeah. is, which is a natural dilemma for a lot of Christians. A lot of Christians. Even and that's today. why this you, came up. Yeah. You want to live right. You know, but there are circumstances around you that is just choking and, you know, militating against you. Yeah, and then you have people that are around that are not encouraging you to, to do that. So the question is, what should Susan do in this situation? You know, um, and one of the things that we came up with during our conversation is, look, um, doing a personal business in itself is not illegal, right? Um, and there are certain organizations, depending on the organization we work, there are, there are certain organizations that actually encourage people, you know, because they know that when you develop your own entrepreneurial skills, you can apply same to the business. But they have caveats, you know, and in some businesses they will tell you, you know what, you've got to declare the business yeah. that you're doing ahead of time, you know. So in such organization, you not declaring it then is a yeah. problem, mm -hmm. you know. But at the same time, they also want to be sure that your business practices will not conflict with their own practice, which is something that you should be wary of. Because then you can start to mix what you do, take some of the company's clients, yeah. you know, use some of, leverage some of the company's resources. That is where the Christians need to be wary and yeah. be careful so that you don't enter into, you know, error in that, in that step. You know, so in itself is not wrong, but you have to understand what the company permits and work within the ambit of what the company permits you to do, you know. You know, um, so, so that's one. Um, the second issue is, should Susan report, you know, the things that she, she, she's, she heard, yeah. you know. Um, that also, it, it's also um, based, it's circumstantial, yeah. you know. Um, it depends on what the company is. If the company is one that's, has a policy of you know what you see you you got to you got to you got to say you know then they, they, there's got to be some avenue where that will be provided so you yeah. leverage on such avenue yeah. to you know report whatever you seen that is wrong as a christian also you know if you have people that are personally involved you, you should also take you know because we're talking about the god life yeah. you know so it's something that you also need to start to pray about yeah. you know for that person at the same time that individual should, should also ask for wisdom because wisdom is important when you are treading in such situations so you must ask and request for wisdom of what to say how to say it 
you know, and when to say it, you know, so you can. Yeah, so uh, we're, we're going to be back um, at, at the beginning of the next service. This is our first transmission, and we're going to discuss this a bit more. Mm -hmm. But you see, the thing is that as a Christian, you have the God life. First thing, you know, when you are working in a place, whatever you are doing, the light that is in you should shine. shine. Sure. Actually, there are certain things that if you don't engage, you don't engage in office gossip, you don't engage. There are things that they won't even bring near you in the first place. They already say this person. This hmm. Now, it's also important you work in a place. Don't bury your head in the sand. Understand what the okay. principles are. One thing we said when we we're discussing this, if you have to rationalize your action, then there might be something wrong. You know, once you start to say, ah, but it's not this, but it's not that. Once you start to talk like that, there's something yeah. wrong. If you think there's something wrong, there is. <laughs> so, exactly. Yeah, if it crosses yeah. your mind that there's something wrong, most likely there is. So, it is important to then find out. Transparency is a good guideline, is a good watchword. If you can be transparent about everything that you're doing, you might work in a place where it is totally permitted. Somebody gave an example where a company does a business at a certain level of... Um, um, in, or to a certain level of um, value, yeah. you know, maybe from certain millions upwards, and they allow their staff to do something below, below that. that. And they take it as, oh, okay, if you, if you build this client up to this level, then you pass them on to the company. And one of the things that we also highlighted is the fact that you can't say, oh, I only work for this place nine to five. There's no such thing. You represent the image of wherever you work mm. for, and you need to understand that as a Christian. And so what you do outside of those hours also matter. Yeah. So if you are finding the client that your company needs, of course you serve your own interests at other times. So really, we're going to discuss it a bit more, you know, um, later on when we come back. But it is important that we apply wisdom. And this wisdom comes from, you know, transparency, honesty, sure. being true to God. Don't rationalize. Mm. We, we know what is right and what is wrong. And we believe that the Holy Spirit will shine his light upon our head and give us clarity, you know, by the Spirit of God on the inside of us. And we know exactly what to do in every situation. Amen. Amen. We're going to take you into the service now, but we look forward to having you join us later on. And we'll be expected to see you at about 10.20 a.m. So we can have a lengthy discussion about this scenario and trash it out a bit more. We would love to have your comment as well, so you can put it on the com um, in the comment section of where, uh, whatever platform you're joining us on. And before we go into the service, please send the link of the platform to someone. Yes, put it someone. on your WhatsApp update. Tell them we're in church, yes. all right? God bless you, and welcome, welcome to church. To church.
can you bring out your handkerchief and wave? Are you ready to praise him? Oh yes, kids. On your money, 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 on your money,
Can we lift up our hands and just begin to bless the name of Jesus? Lift up your hands and begin to bless the name of Jesus. This is that time where we are ministering unto the Father. Can you lift up your hands and just begin to bless his name? Lift up your voice and begin to thank him. Lift up your voice and begin to thank him. He's a faithful God. He's holy. He's kind. Minister unto him this morning. This is why you are. This is why you are one of those who they have given the voice. Lift up your voice and just express yourself in the spirit. It says they that would worship, they must do so in spirit and in truth. Can you just begin to bless the name of Jesus this morning? Lift up your voice and thank him. Speak to your soul this morning. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall and will continually be in my mouth. Can you bring the praise of Jesus onto your lips this morning? Thank him for his faithfulness. Thank him for his kindness. You may have come into this service this morning with a burden on your heart. It doesn't matter. Thank him for the love of Jesus. Thank him for the love of Jesus. Thank him for the love of Jesus. Thank him. Perfect love is what casts away fear. The perfect love of God is what casts away all forms of fear. We give you praise. We give you glory this morning. Begin to thank him this morning. Begin to thank him this morning. Spend some time and just worship. Spend some time and just worship. Don't wait. Don't wait. Don't wait. Don't wait. I will bless you. 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 More love, more power, more of you in my life. More. Can we sing it this morning? We can use that this morning. More of the love of Jesus. service God says he wants to reignite his love in the hearts of people you might be here you think God has forsaken you he's saying I'm bringing my love to overwhelm you he's bringing his love to overwhelm you in whatever that situation is he wants his love to be spread abroad in all of your hearts Lift up your voice and just begin to thank him for the love of Jesus. This love surmounts every form of condemnation. It is not, it doesn't matter whatever it is, that situation it, it is. Just begin to thank him for the love of Jesus. It is the perfect love of Jesus that casts away fear. Thank him for the love of Jesus that is shared abroad in your hearts this morning. Give him glory and give him praise for that love. Give him praise and give him glory for that love. And I will worship you with all of my heart. And I will worship you with all of my soul. And I will worship you.
Psalms 25 from verse 1 to 10. Can you quickly put that scripture up? Psalms 25 from verse 1 to 10. Are you ready this morning? There is a word for someone this morning from this place. Are you ready? Let's go. Put it in the GNT version, please. Psalms 25. Want to go. To you, O Lord, I offer my prayer. In you, my God, I trust. Save me from the shame of defeat. Don't let my enemies gloat over me. There is a word for someone in verse 3. Defeat does not come to those who trust in you, but to those who are quick to rebel. If your trust is in the Lord, I decree over you that defeat is not coming to you in the name of Jesus Christ. No matter what that situation is, I declare, for your trust is in the Lord. Defeat does not come near you in the name of Jesus Christ. Verse 4, let's go. Teach me your ways, O Lord. Make them known to me. Verse 5. Teach me to live according to your truth. For you are my God who saves me. I always trust in you. Verse 6. Remember, O oh Lord, your kindness and constant love, which you have shown from long ago. Verse 7, forgive the sins and errors of my youth. In your constant love and goodness, remember me, Lord. Verse 8, because the Lord is righteous and good, he teaches sinners the path they should follow. Verse 9, he leads the humble in the right way and teaches them his will. Last verse, verse 10. With faithfulness and love, he leads all who keep his covenant and obey his... Can we rejoice over his word this morning? Can you rejoice over his word this morning? Father, we thank you. All praise and glory unto you. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Put your hands together for the senior pastor of the Covenant Nation Global, Pastor Boju. We may be seated. All right, let's take our confession this morning. Once ago, as I sit to listen to the word of God today, a door of utterance has been opened unto me, and I hear the voice of God clearly speaking to me, this is the way to go, walk ye in it. I listen under the influence of the Spirit of God, and I'm not distracted by anything or anyone. 
The word of God is food to my spirit. I am strengthened by it this morning. It is wine to my heart, creating joy within me. It is oil to my face, causing my life to shine, giving me victory in everything that I do. As my eyes make contact with the scriptures used in this message, the Spirit of God opens new things to me. He also brings to my remembrance things Jesus once showed me. I come to understand God's system on the earth, and I receive instruction, encouragement, correction, and enablement to live out God's will. Amen. All right, uh, this morning I want to speak on, on well, if you call it anything, you will say it's spiritual warfare. Psalm 149 and verse 6, the scripture that we looked at um, last Sunday. It says, let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand. For what purpose? Next verse, next verse. It says, to execute the judgment upon sorry, to execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishments upon the people, to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron, to execute upon them the judgment written, to execute upon them the judgment written, this honor have all the saints. Praise the Lord. That's what it says. So to execute the judgment that is written. And what does it mean to execute the judgment that is written? First thing we have to understand is there is therefore the judgment of God that is written concerning any situation you are confronting or you find yourself in any situation, there is a judgment that is written. And that's what David spoke about. He said, it's written of me in the volume of thy book, I come to do thy will, O God. If we look at the book of Daniel, I'm not going into that, it tells us about the fact that the horn made war with the saints and prevailed against them until worship came up to the ancient of days and the books were open, and judgment was now given to the saints, and by that, the kingdom was now established. In other words, let's give an example here in judgment written. So if a person owns a particular property, let's assume it's there as by inheritance, and then some other people have forcefully occupied it, and they don't want to leave. Then they go to the courts there to pray the court, and the judge, therefore, all right, gives his judgment, and the judgment is written out. Now, there are law enforcement agents that what they do is to go and execute the judgment that is written. They don't determine the judgment, they are executors of the judgment that is written. And so God has given us the responsibility to execute the judgment that he has written concerning things on the earth. And we execute that judgment that is written by having praises, high praises on our lips and that two-edged sword. And that two-edged sword is what we find that we're speaking about in Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 17. And it tells us that, take unto yourselves the helmet of salvation, all right, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, or which is the remor of God, praying with all manner and types of prayer, it says, or praying all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance for the saints. 
So the two weapons that we have here is praise that we offer up unto God and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God on our lips, or what we'll say, a word for that proper occasion, or the word, all right, the scriptures there that the Holy Spirit has shown us that is appropriate for that situation, which is the judgment that is written concerning it in an atmosphere of praise, we are executing that judgment that is written. These are the perfect weapons for complete and absolute victory. Nothing supersedes in the realm of the Spirit the application of praise and the spoken word of God to a situation. Let me repeat that nothing supersedes in the realm of the Spirit. Praise God inhabits the praises of his people and his purpose is that what is written concerning that particular situation there be executed upon it. So when Satan came to Jesus, he executed, he didn't give his idea, the judgment that is written. He said, it is written. Satan came a second time, it is written. Satan came a third time, it is written. These judgments that are written are received in answer to prayer and through the study of the Logos, you'll find on the Word of God, the Bible, you'll find what is written, specific things, concerning things that you might be confronting and your business is to execute that judgment that is written. And that is done in an atmosphere of praise and by the spoken word of God appropriate for that particular situation. Now this morning I want to look at something in the scriptures, the first battle that the nation of Israel as a nation faced. And that this is what was deployed in that particular battle, this principle. And there's something in scripture that is called the law of first mention, and it's a law. In other words, anytime anything happens or is mentioned for the first time in the Bible, it, it sets a pattern, or from it, we get a pattern of how God will fulfill that particular thing on the earth. The blueprint is given unto us. So the first miracle that Jesus did, that's the law of first mention, tells you how miracles occur and how God works miracles in the lives of people. And you listen to this, yeah. Because, you know, I even had to jot it down when I was preaching for a service because some things came by inspiration. So I stopped the service to write down my own notes too. So that's not only you writing me too. I must write my notes here. Because the Archbishop in the house said, if you are canceling somebody and you are not being canceled by the counsel that you are giving, you are canceling the person. Which means if you are teaching people and it's the Holy Ghost who is inspiring utterance, you yourself will be getting taught. So I stopped the service. So it's not only you that have the note, I also have the note. Are you following what I'm saying? Yeah. So the law of first mention here when it comes to miracles, Mary gave us the key and listen. She said, when you are in any situation, whatsoever he tells you, do it. Now, what happens is, when we're in situations, we are telling God what to do. What Mary said is, whatsoever he tells you. In other words, if you are faced with any situation, go to God and ask him, what should I do? Don't go and pray as to what he should do. Whatever he tells you to do in response to that situation, do it and it is going to lead to a flood tide of miracles. In other words, you toil all night and catch nothing. You go to him and say, what should I do, O Lord? Not that God, you know, this next time I'm going, I must catch fish. What should I do, O Lord? 
and works in the harpoon's ears, God inspires you, lend your boats there to Jesus that he might preach, all right, upon it. So you lend your boats to Jesus, simply following what you should do there. And then the results of that is that you get to a point where you now get an abundance of fish. In other words, your prayer should always be, Lord. Not that, Lord, you know, do this. Lord, what will you have me do in response to this? And if God tells you, shut up, and you shut up, it will lead to miracles. If God tells you, sing praises, and you sing praises, it will lead to miracles. Hear from heaven. Get his direction. The heavens rule over the earth. The earth doesn't rule over heaven. Thy will be done on the earth as it is exactly in heaven. So if you do what he tells you to do in that situation, it will lead to this. So let's see this battle here in Exodus chapter 17 and verse 8. This was the first battle. And God deliberately told Moses that write down what happened here and rehearse it in the ears of Joshua, and it must be preserved for generations to come. Because there is a massive lesson in what happened that his descendants must know. So in Exodus 17 and verse 8, it says, Exodus 17, 8, Then came Amalek and fought with Israel in Rephidim. So Amalek came to fight with Israel in Rephidim. And then Moses said unto Joshua, he said, next verse, Take it, choose ye out men, and fight with Amalek tomorrow, and I will stand, this was his blueprint, I will stand on the top of the hill with the rod of God in my hand. And then he goes on and says, So Joshua did as Moses had said unto him, and fought Amalek, and Moses, Aaron, and Hor went to the top of the hill. Now here was the experience. And it came to pass that when Moses held up his hand, that Israel prevailed. And when he let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. All right? But Moses' hands were heavy. And they took a stone and put it under him, and he sat thereon, and Aaron and Hor stayed up his hand, one on one side and the other on the other side. And his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. And the Bible says, and Joshua discomforted his Amalek and his people, we say it again, with the edge of the sword. And then in verse 14, and the Lord said unto Moses, write this for a memorial in a book and rehearse it in the ears of Joshua, for I will utterly put out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven. And verse 15 tells us, And Moses built an altar there and called the name of it Jehovah Nissi. The Bible next verse tells us, For he said, Because the Lord has sworn that the Lord will have war with Amalek from generation to generation. Now, he called the name of that altar, which is God revealed himself to him as Jehovah Nissi. Now, what's the meaning of Jehovah Nissi? It means the Lord, my banner. Mighty warrior, victory. But what do we mean by the Lord, my banner? Get this here. It is a flag that you raise. You know, if you are in battle and you raise an army, raises a white flag, what it means is cease fire. You have defeated us, all right, and we have surrendered to you. That's what the white flag means. Now, when you say the Lord my banner, it means that he understood that there is a flag that you raise up. And once that flag is raised up, God, all right, sees that, and God goes to battle on behalf of the person that has raised up that flag. 
manifests himself as a mighty warrior, and that person obtains the victory of the Lord. That is what is called the Lord, all right, my banner. In other words, there is a banner that has been raised up. Moses realized this. Once that banner is lowered in the life of a person, all right, God stops fighting on behalf of that person. Once that banner is lifted up, then God, all right, goes to war on behalf of that particular individual. And so long as that banner is raised up, God is at war. I mean, the song that says, even though I don't see him, he's walking. In other words, he's at war, fighting for that particular person, manifesting himself as a mighty warrior, and that individual will obtain the victory of the Lord. Now understand this, all right? Without that banner being raised up, you might be a covenant child of God, a seed of Jesus Christ, God, all right, will not fight on behalf of that individual if that banner is not lifted up. This is what he was saying. He is Jehovah Nissi. In other words, if you, were, if you are an Israelite, all right, in the day in which the firstborns were destroyed, and God gave an instruction and said, listen, kill a lamb, put the blood upon the doorpost. He is saying that when I see the blood, I will pass over. It's not that because I am a Jew, he will, because you're a Jew, he will pass over. He said, when I see the blood, I will pass over. So if you had a wonderful Jew, a very good Israelite, who failed to apply the blood upon the doorposts, and that blood therefore was not seen there by God, the angel of death will go into the house of that particular person and pick up that particular person. They will go straight, all right, to go and meet God in heaven because they are the seed there of God, but they will be defeated and the angel of God will have access. So God says, wherever I see the banner, I'm fighting over that life. Wherever I don't see that banner and flag, I take it that there's no war that is going on there. The person may be defeated, the person may be crushed, but it is that. That's what Moses, Moses said, I learned this. Which means when I lifted up the rod, God was fighting and Joshua was winning by the edge of the sword. When I lowered that particular thing, he says we were losing. When I raised, he says, I have come to know God in a certain way. And his name is Jehovah Nissi which means the Lord my banner. That flag has got to be raised up over the life of that person consistently for a period of time in which that war is going on until victory is established there through the edge of the sword. He says, I've got it. Now, what's the banner that he lifted up? In other words, he says, what happens on the hilltop? determines the outcome in the valley. What is going on on the hilltop is what determines the outcome in the valley. So what is this banner that you raise? And we'll show it in scripture, all right, throughout the entire scripture that is consistent. Psalm 63 and verse 4. It says, I will praise you as long as I live. I will lift up my hands in thy name. In other words, the lifting up of the hands in the name of the Lord is offering up praise unto God. And this is a certain type of praise that that person is offering up. So Moses said, so long as we were praising God there, we were experiencing victory there on the outside, once we stopped praising, and so the enemy wants you to get heavy so that those hands are no longer lifted up. And when those hands are no longer lifted up, that flag is no longer there. It is that I am praising God there in that situation there for the victory that I have. It is a flag that says victory here. 
It is, I'm raising up. I'm not praising God, all right? This, we need to understand this. You are not praising God with the mindset that you are involved in a war. You are not. You are praising God because the victory is yours. God is the one who is fighting for you. You are not fighting. God is the one who is doing what? Fighting. You are just raising up that flag. Which means so long as you're waving that flag, God is fighting. When you put down that flag, then you can start fighting. Do you get what I'm saying here? So you put up that flag there, all right, and God is the one that is fighting for you. You know, it says this. This is what God told Jesus. He said, sit at my right hand until, not you, Jesus, I make your enemies your footstool. Are you following what I'm saying here? Jesus is the head, we are the body. Sit, which means be in a position of rest until I make thine enemies thy footstool. And when you are studying the scriptures, ways in which you can understand deeper meanings to the scriptures is that you can look at what was said. In other words, the, the, the Bible says they fought at Rephidim. Rephidim there, what's the meaning of Rephidim? When the scripture put it up in verse 8, Exodus 17 verse 8, it says, Amalek came to a fight and fought with Israel, keep the scriptures there, in Rephidim. The meaning of Rephidim there, so you can look at things if you really want to unlock scriptures. Sometimes you can look at it and they use it. If anything that is used in scripture is deliberate, if a number is used, it's intentional. That's why the Bible says, being seventh from Adam, he prophesied. All right? Which means that number seven in scripture represents something. When they say that you'll be there for 40 days and 40 nights, Jesus fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, it represents something. That's why the children of Israel were supposed to be 40 days and then it became 40 years. The number 40 represents something. The number 10, those numbers mean something there. Rephidim, the meaning of it, is a place of rest. In other words, you are in a position of rest when, when the Amalekites come to fight. And so what you are doing is you are resting there in the victory that Jesus Christ has for you as a person. And what you are doing is you are raising up that banner and it is, all right, first, first John chapter 5 and verse 4, it tells us that whosoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh. This is not the contest that overcomes. It's a victory that does what? Overcomes the world, even our faith. So faith is the believer's voice of victory. In other words, it's a victory that overcomes the world. An acknowledgement of a victory in Christ. It says God causes us to triumph in Christ Jesus and by us in every place. He makes manifest the savour of the knowledge of him. The word triumph is not a contest. The word triumph is a celebration, all right, of the outcome of a contest. In other words, as you start celebrating that Jesus Christ won on the cross and at resurrection morning, that he has delivered you from the power of darkness, that he has, all right, met the foe and defeated him. And you start celebrating and God hears the voice of victory in praise. He goes to war to make sure what you are celebrating is made manifest in your life. Do you get what I'm saying here? So it's a believer's voice of victory. It's not a believer's voice there of struggle. It's not a believer's voice of difficulty. It's a believer's voice there of victory. And so long as my hands don't get weary and my praise, all right, is weakened and I stop praising God, and we'll see why people stop praising God, all right, because of things on the outside. And you stop praising God, he says, victory is certain. For he will go as a mighty man of war to fight on your behalf. Whoever is waving that flag and celebrating the victory that we have in Christ Jesus. So his banner is right over. In fact, verse 15 to verse 16, if you read it literally, it is what he needs. Indeed, my hand is lifted towards the Lord's throne. And as long as my hand is lifted up, 
That's what Jehovah Nisi means. I will have victory. For the Lord will be at war on my behalf from generation to generation. So I'm lifting up my hand, get this, in the victory that I have. Stand fast in the liberty wherewith Christ has made you free. Do you get what I'm saying here? You are standing in the day, evil day, stand fast. What are you standing? You are standing in the liberty. In other words, on the outside, it might seem that you are in bondage to something, but the way you get out of that bondage is by standing fast in the liberty where Christ has made you free, and you are rejoicing in the fact that I'm free, even though physically on the outside you might still be in bondage. That rejoicing that I'm free will cause God to remove all forms of entanglement. That's Jehovah Nisi. Are you following saying here? If you raise the banner of I'm struggling, say Satan, then the demons come. If you raise the banner of things are difficult, then they get worse. Are you following what I'm saying here? But if you raise a banner there, all right, of victory. In other words, of course, we can use this as an example now, all right, because it's going in the reverse. Okay? You get what I'm saying here. That's dollar now. It's going down. So we can use that example. We're not even, all right? Somebody put something that he, he went to use millions to buy dollars. No, lent money, used his house as collateral to buy dollars, hoping it will go to 2,500. I don't know how you can bet against your country and God will bless you. Okay, now they're about to collect the house. Because if it continues this way, the heart will be sinking. You understand what I'm saying here? Okay, so, so we can use that. Now, let's assume a person decides, I'm going to, let's just say that, I'm going to um, do something, and it costs, let's assume, it's in dollars. So if you say, let's say, one million dollars, and he looks at it and says, ah, this thing is going to cost a, a, a billion. I just, I just say, call him up. And, and the dollar begins to go up. You know, after some time, the hand can be heavy. All right? Billion, okay. Father, we thank you. 1.5 billion. Jesus, we thank you. 2 billion. Father, we praise you. 3 billion. Maybe we should stop this project. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. All right? Which means, I want to say the soldier, he stopped. But so long as that person is saying, I have victory, 1 billion, we have victory. 2 billion, victory is complete. 3.5, God has done it. 5, God says, I will continue to provide. Are you following what I'm saying here? So long as you're waving that flag, regardless of what happens, God is fighting for you. So let me show some scriptures here. Uh, so someone says, you know, my spouse is terrible. It's terrible. So long as you're saying that, the spouse will get worse. Until God sees victory, then he starts fighting for you. Are, are you following what I'm saying here? So long as you're talking condition, and you're not acknowledging, you're not in a place of rest. I hope you understand what Jehovah needs is. That means I'm waving a banner over my life of victory. I'm not waving any banner because God is the one fighting for me. Look at Isaiah 42, and let me show you this, that this is what, wherever he hears that sound of victory, he goes to war. Isaiah 42 and verse, verse 12, look at what it says, quickly here. It says, let them give glory unto the Lord. Let them declare his praise in the islands. Once they start that, what happens? Next verse. The Lord shall go forth as a what? Mighty man. He shall stir up jealousy like a man of what? War. He shall cry, he shall roar, he shall prevail against his what? Enemies. As Moses said, here is the key. Jehovah Nisi means raise that banner over your life and God fight for you. Psalm 81 is all over the scriptures, verse 1. Psalm 81, verse 1. 
Now you understand what Jonah was saying. They that do what? Observe lying vanities will forsake that mercy. Psalm 81 verse 1. Sing aloud unto God our strength. Make a joyful noise unto the God of Jacob. It's a joyful noise. There is joy in it. Next verse. Take a psalm, bring hither a timbrel, and the pleasant harp with a psaltery. Then he says, blow the trumpet in the new moon in a time appointed on a solemn feast day. For this was a statute for Israel and a law of the God of Jacob. He now says, this he ordained in Joseph for a testimony when he went through the land of Egypt. So at what time were they making this joyful noise? At what time would they take a psalm, a timbrel, and all of that? When he went through the land of Egypt, where I heard a language, please put up scripture, all right, that I understood not. The next verse. He says, I removed, because of that sound, I removed his shoulder from the body, and his hands were delivered from the pots. Then he says, thou callest in trouble. So they were in trouble when they were doing that. And I delivered thee. I answered thee in the secret place of thunder. I proved thee by the waters of Meribah. O oh, my people, I will hearken unto me here, my people, I will testify unto thee, O Israel. If you will hearken unto me, he says, there shall no strange God be in thee, neither shall thou worship any strange God. This is what he said. I am the Lord that brought you out of Egypt. Open your mouth, what? Wide. And I will do what? Fill it. He said, but my people will not hearken to my voice, and Israel will have none of me. Right? So I gave them up to their lust, and they walked in their own counsel. Oh, next verse, it says, Oh, that my people had hearkened unto me, and Israel had walked in my ways. I will soon have subdued their enemies. And the haters and turned my hand against their adversary, if I heard that sound. The sound God is saying is not God. Once you do it, you know I will praise you. Just do it. For the rest of my life, 419, you won't praise me. <laughs> Once you collect the thing, you are going your way. God says, I don't do advance fee fraud. Give me the praise in advance. You will know I'm a real person. Do you understand this? It is the, listen to what I'm saying, the sacrifice of praise. It's the believer's voice of victory in the midst of a battle where you sit still and you are praising God for the victory and God goes to war on your behalf. Now, what causes people not to come out? Now, if you don't have that voice of victory and you enter into prayer, it won't work. If you don't have that voice of victory and you are trying to make confession with the edge of the sword, it won't work. Do you get what I'm saying here? It starts out, all right, with you rejoicing. You can't allow the condition on the outside to affect your mood on the inside. And there's only one way you can solve them. Quickly look at it as we close. And make sure that you are born in a state where there's rejoicing, that you, there's that spirit of joy that is on the inside of you, all right, and you are full of praise always unto God, and God himself begins to work, right, on your own behalf. Now look at Isaiah 49 here and verse 13. All right, to verse 15 here, quickly. It says, sing, O heavens, and be joyful, O earth. Break forth into singing, O mountains. For the Lord has comforted his people and will have mercy upon the afflicted. But this is why the people don't put up that banner there. Next verse, put the next verse. It says, but Zion said, the Lord has forsaken me. In other words, and you will appear forsaken until this banner is up. The Lord has forgotten me. You will look forgotten until you raise it. He says, next verse, he says, Can a woman forget her sucking child that she should not have compassion on the son? He says, Yea, they may forget, but I will not forget thee. But he is waiting for that thing to be raised over your life. Now, quickly go to verse 20 to verse 22. 
Then he says, when you raise it over your life, he says, the children you will have after you have lost the other. What you lost was when you were losing in that battle when that thing wasn't up. He says, shall say again in your ears, this place is too straight or too narrow for me. Give place to me that I may dwell. Then thou shall say in thy heart, who hath begotten me this? Saying I lost my children and I was desolate, captive, removing to and fro. Who had brought up these? Behold, I was left alone. These, where have they been? And then he says, the Lord says, behold, I will lift up my hand. In other words, as you lift up that your hands to God, God will lift up his hand to the Gentiles and his standard to the people and they shall bring thy sons, all right, which means the results will begin to come because you have lifted it up. In other words, this covenant can only work in a hostile environment. Are you following what I'm saying here? If everything is going well, all of us will be singing praises. There's no distinction. That's why it's when famine comes in that people lift up the thing there. It's when it appears difficulty comes in, they lift it up. It's when it appears things are going that they lift it up and say, the Lord has given me victory. And once they lift that thing up, God goes to war for them. And God is fighting. And when they see the results of the battles of the Lord, they say, who has begotten me all this? From whence did all of these come from? I, you know, I, I, because the mindset they had at one point was I was forsaken. God has forgotten now. There's a total turnaround because of this. And then it says in verse 24 and 25, it says that shall the lawful, shall the prey of the mighty be taken and the lawful captive delivered. It says, but thus said the Lord, even the captives of the mighty shall be taken away. And the prey of the terrible shall be delivered, if I hear this praise. He says, for I will do what? Contend with them that do what? Contend with thee. Which means you don't have to do the contend. I will do what? Contend with them that contend with thee, and I will save their children. So what he saved, that the person said, who has begotten me all of this? It was God's, the, the, the spoils of war, the victory that was gotten. That's the same thing that happened to Jehoshaphat during his time. When Jehoshaphat began to sing, the Bible says, and when they began to sing, God set an ambushment. When, put up that scripture, when they began, at what time? He says, this is what Moses discovered. He said, listen, if your hands come down, you are going to lose. If your hands are lifted up, pull out that scripture, when they began to praise, it says, God said, it says, once your hands are up, and that hands that are up means that you are singing, that you have the victory and total victory in Christ Jesus. All right, so let me bring this to a close here. So how do you, all right, come to the place where you as a person how do you come to the place where your hands are always strengthened? All right? All right, put up Second Chronicles 20. 20. Uh, you folks. Uh -huh. So they say it. And when they began to do what? To sing. And to do what? To praise. The Lord, this is, what Moses, this is what Moses discovered when he said Jehovah Nisi, which means wherever that banner is not raised, you don't see God as a man of war. And wherever it's not raised, you will not have victory. If they call a fast and they are not joyful, they will lose. If they are preaching the word and they don't raise the banner, they will lose. Are you following me saying you have to raise that banner there, which is a believer's voice. That's the starting point of victory. That's what brings about the advancement. So what will sustain that? Let me just share this five minutes and close with this. Because faith is that victory that overcomes the world. So it is a voice of faith. It is the victory. Faith is the victory that overcomes is not the struggle it is a good fight of faith why is it a good fight of faith because you already know the outcome if you stay in faith it is a good fight you know that listen this is a fight what's the victory is faith now how do you get that faith 
The Bible says faith cometh by hearing in Romans 10, 17, and hearing the rema of God. Romans 10, 17, please. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing the word of God, which is the rema, which is an appropriate scripture that fits that particular situation. So if a person is going through something and then the proper scriptures that fit that occasion are heard by that person, it's glad tidings of great joy. It is good news, that's the gospel, which is the scriptures that fit that particular situation. Joy will come in the heart of that person. So we see in Acts chapter 14 and verse 9, this was a man that was born crippled. Faith cometh by hearing. Faith cometh by hearing. And faith, all right, is the victory that will overcome the world. Now, look at this. The same heard Paul speak. So how did he get faith? He heard Paul speak. Now, there are two ways in which faith can come. It comes through the rema, but somebody can say something to you, which is a, a scripture that is fitting for that situation. You can hear it from the lips of somebody and faith will come. Or you can hear it from your own lips yourself. Now, the issue with you, particularly as you are maturing, when he says you ought to be teachers now, in other words, you should be generating your remas now. You can't sit by the well and say, I have no man to push me in. Uh, you can't wait if you're in the midst of a battle somewhere, in an airport somewhere. You can't be waiting for somebody. You have to hear the words of faith yourself. So you can't be dependent there and say, well, when I get to church on Sunday, maybe they'll say something, all right? When you get to a certain point that you must, in fact, you, you will see this, you should be distributing remarks to others. But the point is, it comes by hearing. So this man who was born crippled, the same head Paul preached. Now, in that teaching, Paul must have said certain things. Paul, who steadfastly, that's Paul, beholding him and perceiving that he had faith to be made whole. That means where did the faith come from? From hearing. It says, Paul said, stand on your feet. And the man leaped, all right? Now, second example is the woman with the issue of blood in Mark 5 and verse 25. The Bible tells us that she had spent all that she had, but rather grew worse. Mark 5, 25. A certain woman with an issue of blood, 12 years. And then the next verse, it says that, and had suffered many things of many physicians, and spent everything, and nothing better, but rather grew worse. The next verse now says, when, what turned it around? When she had heard of Jesus, it was what she heard that brought faith on the inside and gave her the manifested victory there. He that worketh miracles among you, how is he doing it? By the hearing of faith. They heard, all right, something there. So that is what is called the rema, an appropriate scripture that fits that situation. I want to close with this thought here. Now, if you hear that appropriate scripture that fits that particular situation, there will be faith. I know the danger here is Peter heard God, started walking on water, and then when he saw that the winds were boisterous, he and began to sink. So you can start out and hear something two weeks ago, but the changes can be so severe that after some time, you, 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 you really can re rejoice. Which means, like God, I said, somebody can say, I'm believing God. They say it's 1,000. We will still do it. 1, 5. We'll still do it. 2,000. We'll still do it. 5,000. You tell the whole family, we can only go to Togo now. <laughs> By road. <laughs> Are you following what I'm saying here? Forget, don't let me hear Paris or London. Togo. By road. They say, they say we're not even doing Togo again. Oh, good rat, you, you are going to say what's here. Because as the arrows are coming, it is deflating faith there. So how will that person still be, just as an example, in that faith place? It comes by hearing. It comes by hearing. That's why it says, exhort one another daily, lest anybody lose with an heart of unbelief in departing. Unbelief will creep in if you are not doing it daily. See, daily is the key. Daily is the key. So, Rema, Rema, one of the definitions, is a freshly spoken word. 
Not a new word, but a freshly what? Spoken word. Now, let me close here and show the, what, you know, this is what defeats people. I'm saying this is exactly what defeats people. So, when Jesus talked about the rema, he said, man shall not, he quoted that scripture, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every rema that proceeds out of the mouth of God. You know, if we give you bread, bread is bread, but there's still bread, and there's fresh little bit of bread. The same are what? Bread. But if we give you stale bread for two months, you can't eat it. When they give you freshly baked bread, what happens is you love that bread. But it is the same bread. See what I'm saying here? So man shall not, but by every. Now, listen, because, let, let me just say this here. When Mary came to me, when the angel came, and Mary said, how shall these things be? God said in Luke 1, 37, he says, with God, nothing shall be impossible. The word nothing are two words. No thing shall be impossible. Go and check if you're a Greek person. Go home so you know what I'm saying is true. The word thing there is rema, which means what he's saying is that with God, no rema shall be void of what? Power. What he's saying there, he says, Mary, with God, no rema, freshly word spoken, shall make nothing will be what? Impossible. If you are getting the freshly word spoken every time. Now, let me just close by saying this here. So how do we get this fresh word? In Exodus chapter 16 and verse 15, quickly, you will see that manna cannot be kept. When the children of Israel saw it, they said to one another, it is manna. For they knew not what it was. And Moses said unto them, this is the bread that the Lord had given you to eat. They said, what's this? Verse 16, this is the thing the Lord has commanded. Now, quickly go to verse 20. Verse 20, it says, or verse 19. Now, Moses told them, he said, verse 19, Moses said, Moses said, let no man leave it till morning. Next verse, it says, notwithstanding the hearken not unto Moses, but some of them left it until morning, and it bred worms and stank, and Moses was wroth with them. Verse 21, it says, and they gathered every morning, every man according to his eating, uh, which means is every morning you gathered the word manna. Why do you think Jesus prayed, give us this day, our daily bread? That bread must be daily or else it starts thinking. The word you had last year can't sustain you for the battles today. If it's last year, your praise, because once your hand goes down, you start experiencing defeat. It will, listen to me, contaminate it. That's why, just two scriptures to close here. Look at Lamentations 3, 22 to 23. Lamentations. It says, Lamentations 2, it is of the Lord's mercies that we are not what? Consumed. Or else we'll have been consumed. Because his compassions fail not. Next verse. They are what? New every morning. Every morning they are new. Great is thy faithfulness O oh Lord. So he says, his mercies are what? New every morning. What's this mercy that is new every morning? Isaiah 50 and verse 4. Every morning. It's new. It's new every morning. Isaiah 50 and verse 4. The Lord God has given me the tongue of the learned that I should know how to speak a word in season. Can you see it's the Rema word? It is a word in season to him that is what? Weary, including yourself. You can speak it to yourself. Do you get this? Look at what it says. He wakeneth morning by morning. He wakeneth my ear to hear as the word let it. In other words, every morning he wants to give you fresh manna. That's why, listen to this, we have to go back to the foundation of the real gospel. Read your Bible and pray every day. If you want to grow, there is no short box. Are you following what I'm saying here? You read your Bible and pray. If you read it last month, it is stale bread. It cannot command praise. When you open the newspaper, you will know that there are forces. 
His compassion fails not. They are renewed every morning, except you neglect it. But if you open and you read it, you start seeing things that will energize you, that you lift up your hands in praise unto God. And so long as you're lifting up your hands in victory to God, that the victory is mine, God is fighting. And he said, I only need you to do it for a while, a short while, until manifested victory. Uh, are you following what I'm saying here? But how are you going to do it? That's why it says, thy words were found. I ate them. They became the joy. That it is only the word. So you go to God in prayer every day. And he gives you bread. And he gives you, and you say, the victory there. The, because you will see things. The woman with the issue of blood saw, saw people touch Jesus, hold Jesus, and remain sick. You will hear the person is battling. Let's assume the doctors say, you have cancer. You have two more years to live. Tells the person. They will put on the television and they will hear stories of people that died of cancer. The arrow is coming at them. They will go somewhere and they will hear of somebody who was a great person for God and died of cancer. Another arrow comes, pa, and then and Satan will say, "Are you better than those people?" You will need a fresh word from heaven. Are you following, Tanya? God deepens your faith to the point where you lift up your hands and you are rejoicing and praising him that listen, if I will touch the helm of his garment, I don't know about somebody else, but I shall be made whole. You can't fake it, you have to hear it. Do you get what we're saying here? And if you keep going to the book to read it and you are looking at it every morning, don't forsake his mercy. He will drop thoughts into you to make you dance and praise him. And it's only a short while before the victory becomes manifest. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your word. I pray for everyone under the sound of my voice. Strengthen them on this path. Cause your grace to be made manifest within their lives. Grant unto them insight. If anybody is going through anything at this stage within your life, I declare unto you that before this week runs out, your ears will be opened. The appropriate scripture for that thing will enter into your heart, flooding it with peace. And as God has set you upon that rock, he will establish your goings. And every day, morning by morning, you will hear the sound of victory concerning it until it's made manifest in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. All right. I said this during the message, you know, it's like a joke, but it's not a joke, sir. Uh, if you are jackpine, eh? hmm? pray well, though, because you know countries are closing down, others are opening, and some of those countries opening, apparently they are recruiting soldiers. <laughs> you are laughing. I'm telling the truth. Soldiers to fight war. So all the people that went to Russia now, we hear they are fighting in Ukraine. <laughs> so lead us not into what? Temptation. <laughs> Don't think that you are before we see you. Because some Indians who are doing Instagram live whispering, we are going to the war front. We are going to help them. There's nothing we can do because you are across the ocean. No. We will stay where we are saying, Father, have mercy. May their faith be what? Strengthened. It's always good to say this thing so you don't hear of some strange country that is issuing visa and say, we are going, we are going. Lest, you know, wars are coming everywhere now. People are recruiting soldiers. All right. Maybe you say it's job. Job is job now. The job available <laughs> is to fight. All right. Quickly, um, our, well, in about two weeks from now, two and a half weeks on Tuesday, first of May, we'll be having platform. All right. Before we went on television, um, first of all, May first platform was for Labor Day, which means to give strategic insights to people on how they can be more productive at work. That's the original vision for it. And before we went on television, um, we used to do it in TBS. And in 2009, which was the last time we did it, all right, we broke it into summits, all right? That's different tents. So we had five different tents in TBS. So you will register for whichever tent you are going into. And when you get there, they'll say, well, that's your tent, all right? Tent A, tent B, tent C, tent C. And then you go in there, and that's the way we did it. Now, we stopped doing it that way because they, that, that year they said we can't come to TBS because it was Jubilee, Golden Jubilee, and they wanted to use it. And so we went on television. 
And in going on television, you know, I thought deeply about it. Probably we lost something about that particular weed, which, in fact, let me tell you what happened. I was on Virgin Atlantic one day. A young man came to meet me. He was a business guy. He said, Pastor, he said, what? He said, you invite people to teach. He said, they never talk about the things you tell them to talk about. I said, it's the pressure of television. When people are on television, they are thinking about their brand. They are thinking about their business. Sometimes they change what they are supposed to say to their brand and their business. He said, cut the television off. He said, let them go back to teaching business. He said, cut it off. Stop doing it on television. All right? So I thought about what he said. And um, so we are going back to the original vision here. So we're going to have, we'll televise it, but we're going to have three summits uh, and we're going to homogeneous groups. So we're targeting it at homogeneous groups. The first one will be here. When I say first one, they just three, I'm just saying first. We'll be here to be on entrepreneurship. And so it will be five people that will speak on entrepreneurship, how to build a business from scratch. And these are people who built their businesses from scratch and built it up. All right, so that's what they'll be teaching, the different progressions on that. So if you're an entrepreneur, that's it. Then we have entrepreneurship, which are people that are working inside corporations, and this for middle and senior managers, all right, who are creating wealth within an organization by products and services and innovation, and that's what holding a cage at, at the Marriott Hotel. And the third, all right, is for women, all right, women in business and women in tech. And we have two of the most solid business women in this country, women in business and three younger people who are into tech. So women in business and tech. And that's for people who were born by God as women. You get what I'm saying? What I'm saying? When you came into this earth, you came, God brought you forth as a woman. All right? Not that you changed halfway. You, you, you're a woman. All right? So it's for women in business and women, all right, in tech. So the registration will open on Friday, so you decide whichever one you want to go. I showed somebody the images of the three. The person said, I'm struggling, I'm struggling. I said, that's good. So it's power of choice, okay? Because some people, if they don't give you the choose, you just go anywhere you want to go to. Now, choose. On television, they are playing five matches at the same time, choose. You can't say stop. The news is going on, they don't wait for you. They are saying the news. Uh, the film is going on. They are not waiting because you are watching a football match. Choose. So we're in a life of choices here. So you make your choice there. God bless you all. Shall we stand up to our feet as we begin to give praise to God? We've got an opportunity to begin to thank him this morning. And lift up your voice and just thank him. Praise is the believer's voice of victory. Lift up your voice and begin to thank him. Begin to thank him for the entrance of the word of God is what brings light, understanding to our hearts. Can you just spend some time this morning and just begin to thank him? Begin to thank him for the seed of his word and that there is impartation upon your soul. Now you have clarity on that which God is doing. The word of God has come fresh unto you this morning. You have got to return all the glory back to him. Thanking him for that situation that you are in. Begin to thank him this morning and lift up your voice. Don't hold back. Don't hold back. Just begin to thank him. There is a particular situation that is reoccurring in your mind right now. Don't be generic about your praise. Do not be generic about your praise. There is that specific thing that God wants you to thank him for. So lift up your voice and begin to thank him. Reach within your soul and begin to thank him. Begin to thank him. Begin to thank him. Thank him for his faithfulness over that situation. Thank him for his mercy. Thank him because his mercies are new. Every morning. And the mercy of God has come unto you this morning. Fresh unto you. Thank him this morning. Lift up your voice and thank him. Give him all the praise and give him all the glory. For the Lord is good. For the Lord is good. His mercies endures forever. 
Father, we thank you. We give you praise this morning in Jesus' mighty name. Deuteronomy chapter 20 from verse 1 to 4. I bring you good news. Amen. Can you rejoice when I say I bring you good news? I bring you good news. Deuteronomy chapter 20 and from verse 1 to 4. And this is a word for someone this morning. It says, when you go out to fight against your enemies and you see chariots and horses and an army that outnumber yours, this is a word for someone. You are bidding, you are in competition, you are in whatever it is. In the course of this week, it says, do not be afraid of them. The Lord your God who rescued you from certain situations in the past is with you right now in the name of Jesus. Uh, can you lift up your voice and begin to thank him for this word? Begin to thank him for this word. That when I go out this week, this is my experience. I will not be afraid. For the Lord has bought me this victory in the name of Jesus. Begin to thank him this morning. Verse 2. Let's go. Verse 2. It says, before you start fighting, a priest is to come forward and say to the army, what is he saying? Verse 3. Men of Tisi and Igomu, listen. Today you are going into battle. Do not be afraid of your enemies or lose courage or do what? Or panic. Verse 4. It says, the Lord your God is going with you. And he has given you victory. Can we begin to rejoice this morning? Can you rejoice this morning? Can you rejoice this morning? Can you rejoice this morning? If you're here, you know you have the victory. Begin to rejoice this morning. Begin to rejoice this morning and begin to thank him. Lift up your voice and begin to thank him. Over your children, begin to rejoice. Over your jobs and your careers, begin to rejoice. Over your marriage, begin to rejoice. Over that health situation, lift up your hands this morning and rejoice. Begin to rejoice, begin to rejoice. Begin to rejoice, enjoy the victory that God has granted you over that situation. Can you rejoice this morning? Can you rejoice this morning? Lord God, we thank you. Oh God, we thank you. I speak life into you right now. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you for your victory. This is the victory that we have. This is the victory that we have. That you have now made us that fragrant. Can you rejoice this morning? Thank him. Thank him this morning. Can you thank him this morning? We thank you. We give you praise. We give you glory. 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 Give you praise, give you glory. In Jesus' mighty name, lift up your hands this morning. And so, Father, we decree over every single person who is watching online or you are present here that this is your victory this week. That as you go out, you are led forth with joy. In the name of Jesus Christ. You go out with peace. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. That the mountains and the hills have broken forth into singing. That the trees of the field... They are clapping their hands on your behalf. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. 10,000 will fall to your right hand. Multiple will fall on your left. It will not come near you in the name of Jesus Christ. I decree and I declare. Anyone carrying any form of ailment. I decree that you have received your victory right now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ nothing valuable ever dies in your hands those things that god has placed in your hands they thrive and they flourish in the mighty name of jesus christ relationships that god has planted in your life they will not die in your hands in the name of jesus christ i decree and i declare that your love for jesus is reignited in the mighty name of jesus christ you go out this week and you come back rejoicing with multiple testimonies in the name of Jesus. Can you give God a big hand this morning? Give him a shout of praise. Give him a shout of praise. Give him a shout of praise. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name. 
Amen. You may be seated. Very quickly, a couple of announcements. In, well, it's not in order. The first one is this, and I'm going to quickly share something very briefly with you. And I shared with, um, with some of the leaders uh, while we were praying at 7 a.m. yesterday. It's important that we keep this entire thing going. And it's a long story, but so I'm going to make it short. Um, so we only prayed one prayer yesterday at, at the leaders' meeting. And one of the, that prayer was from Acts chapter 11, verse 17. I want, to, I want to quickly share something, and it's important. I'm make, I want to make this announcement for the video that we're going to have on the 26th. So Peter had had a conversation with um, the angel that God sent to him. Cornelius was in his place, but that's an, it's plenty, plenty of conversation. But let me just um, pace myself and then explain properly. So Peter said this in Acts chapter 11, verse 17. They had harassed him to ask him that, why, how come you went to preach to the Gentiles, and he says, it is clear that God gave those Gentiles, in fact, the way he reported it, he said God gave those, those Gentiles the same gift that he gave us when we believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. Who was I then to try to stop God? That was his conversation. Now, we're praying, certain, I mean, one of the prayers we prayed is this, that anybody here who perhaps God wants to do something in their life, and they are the ones to stop it, that God should take, take that thing out, all right? Now, we want to pray a certain prayer, five or four prayers, very important prayers at the vigil. I mean, I've talked, uh, talked about that, you know, um, earlier. One is that every single person who has any form of ailment in their body, they will be completely middle. Number two, that everybody will be gainfully employed, Number three, all marriages are intact in this particular assembly. And number four, all of our children have the Spirit of God over their lives. So we want to pray that prayer. But here is what this thing is. And as what Peter was saying, so Cornelius was in his house praying. Um, Peter was also in his house praying. And the Holy Spirit went. And the reason why they attended to Cornelius, who was a Gentile, who doesn't have the Holy Spirit, was that they said, your prayer and your hands giving has come up unto God as a memorial. On that premise, they, they send an angelic visitation. So what we want to do, all right, prior to this time, is that God is going to minister to you. Now, that's before the 26th. And that day, that Friday, the 26th, will be a fasting day. And then we're going to open up the channels in the morning. Uh, in the after, like We're going to observe all the watches for about 10 minutes leading to the vigil, all right? So please join us. If you're not on MixLR on um, TCN Gomu, please um, try and um, what's it called, subscribe so that when the channel comes up, you're able to be a part of it. So, one of the, one of, so we're going to do six. Sorry, we're not, we're, we're going to do, we're not going to do six. We do nine, 12, three, six, all right? Then nine. Then we're going to be here by 10 p.m., all right, leading to that particular conversation. I want to pray those things in those particular succession. So please join us. Of course, you know, our video, aside from the fact that there will be tea and coffee, all right, we, we want to spend, we want to do what they call meditative prayers and meditative praise, all right? The, the Tribex guys are going to start out the entire conversation. There was something they did at Tribex that I want us to also do, all right? Well, I didn't tell them to. They, they did that. I think it's a really powerful um, time of worship that you want to, be, you want to really, truly an ex, uh, ex experience. Also, at the midweek service, we're going to be teaching on in the final analysis. That's midweek service. Now, there are certain things that are, you know, in the, in the end, you know, when you're in a business conversation, for instance, they said to you, they will say to you, what's, what's the final outcome of this particular thing? So people cut their losses at some point. People are getting married to people after checking the entire thing. In the final analysis, this is why I'm getting married to you. In the final analysis, this is why I'm coming to Covenant Nation. Some people have gone to different places and stuff. In the final analysis, I know that, I mean, it might, it might not make sense to you, but there is always a final analysis as far as human beings are concerned. So join us on another particular one as we have that conversation in the final analysis, and then your focus will be fixed on specific things as far as your life is concerned. Amen? And finally, all right, today is United Tribe. How many of you are excited about that? 
But let me be very clear about what we want to do today. Last month or last quarter, we had a, we had a goal, so to speak. But this quarter, if some of you are carrying your goals to the next quarter, that's fine. All right? All right? But what we want to do is to ensure that within your United Tribe group, you are praying for each other so that those goals are being achieved. All right? That's what we want to do today. All right? I think that should be about it. God bless you. And have a wonderful Sunday. Praise the Lord. All right, can we take a confession after the message? One, two, three, go. I declare this week the lines are falling onto me in pleasant places. My steps are ordered by the Lord. Every day I open my mouth declaring things I believe calling into existence those things I see with my inner eyes as though they are. And God in return daily loads my life with benefits, advancing my position. Morning by morning, he opens my ear to hear his voice and has positioned me by his instructions such that others call me fortunate, lucky and blessed by what has occurred every day. I declare wisdom is the principal thing Therefore, I have gotten wisdom and with our understanding. I call wisdom my sister and understanding my closest friend. I've exalted wisdom and she has promoted me, making my life glorious. She has brought me to the place of honor because I have embraced her. I have listened to her and received her sayings. And so by the decisions I make, years are added every day to my life. God has taught me in the way of wisdom he has led me in the right path. When I go out this week, my steps do not end in dark, narrow passages, nor do I waste time making wrong turns. Amen. Very quickly, we have a very special group of people in our midst. If this is your very first time at the Covenant Nation, Igomu, we'd like you to rise to your feet, your first time guest, and we want to show you some love. If this is your first time at the Covenant Nation, please, could you rise to your feet, wherever you are in the auditorium, this is your first time at the Covenant Nation, Igomu. Please rise to your feet. Please rise to your feet. I see some people over there. Thank you so much for coming. Can we keep clapping? Can we keep clapping? Can we keep clapping? Let them know that we're excited to receive them. Thank you so much. I see some people on my right. God bless you. Thank you for coming. We prayed for you. You are here now, and we are grateful to God for bringing you. On behalf of our senior pastor, Pastor Koju Oyemade and his lovely wife, Pastor Tony Oyemade, who we just heard, we want to specially welcome you. This is the Covenant Nation Igomu. And also on behalf of our resident pastor, Pastor Wali Ekundayo, we welcome you. We thank you for coming. So the members of the ushering team standing beside you, they would usher you to a place that we have specially prepared for you. So please your bag, your phones, your pads, and everything you came with, and just go to my right hand, which is your left. Church, are we happy? Are we grateful for our first time guests? Well, then you need to show it if you are grateful to God. Let's give God some praise. Can we keep clapping? Can we keep clapping for them? Thank you. Beautiful faces everywhere. We are grateful for the addition to our family. We are grateful for the gift of your presence. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We are almost seated. Just, let's just keep that energy going. Thank you. Thank you. I don't know if you can see what I'm seeing, but they are beautiful. They are handsome. God bless you. We are almost there, church. We are almost there. We are almost seated. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for coming. All right. You came the first time and you said, you know what? I'm going to have another dose <laughs> of all right. We are enjoying at the Covenant Nation. You're coming to your second time. Your second time guest. Could you just rise to your feet? We'd like to acknowledge you quickly. It's your second time. You came the first time and you decided to show again the second time. Thank you so much for coming. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, my God bless you. Thank you. May please be seated. Thank you. Amen. We are grateful to God when he adds to our numbers. Amen. 
All right, it's time for us to take our fight and our offerings. Um, where you are seated, you have an offering envelope. However, if you like to give a fight, um, you could just wave your hand and the members of the ushering team will bring a fight envelope for you to give your fight. The details of the fight and the offering account are displayed on the screen for those who like to give electronically. Um, you could just look at the details on the screen and give. When we give our fight, when we give an offering, we must do it with joy for it to be acceptable. It's not just about the money, it's the act, the act, the act and then the heart as well that we do it with. So give with joy, give with gladness. Can we say a prayer? Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the privilege and the opportunity to give to you, to give to your kingdom, to give to your work. Lord, we ask that as we sow this seed, that you continue to sustain us with corn and wine, and that you cause your rain to fall in our lands in all seasons. For in Jesus' precious mighty name we've prayed. All right, so with gladness of your heart, can you give with joy? Put a smile to your giving. Amen. So let's give our fights, let's give our offerings. Let's give it joy, let's give it happiness in our hearts. It's fine to move your body, that's okay. good okay thank you all right thank you um today's united tribe at the end of service or please make sure that you you know meet your tribe members and have the discussion before we go and also if you didn't attend sunday school earlier please make sure that you stay behind all right um for sunday school and you'll be blessed it's time for us to take our chance um can we rise to our feet to take our chance however today's chance is going to be different i want you to do something remember that in the book of acts all right when peter and john were threatened they went back to their company so when you go this week and you have different things coming at you all right remember what pastor said the fresh word but then we are going to take our phones and take a selfie with this chance so the idea is that you can always go back to it and be in this same environment right in that video and then you see everyone making the chant and when you say nothing valuable dies in your hand and so whatever you are faced with this week you can go back to that video and relieve that moment are we ready are you ready don't be scared don't be shy all right coin can you take out of your phone we are going to shout all right. and declarations join us online every morning at 5 a.m west african time via www.mixler.com forward slash covenant our online midweek services at the Covenant Station are a refreshing time of fellowship with God in worship and an in-depth study of His Word. Join us online every Wednesday as we recharge and receive all that heaven has prepared for us. Time is 6.45 p.m. West African Time via www.mixler.com forward slash covenant and 7 p.m. on Facebook and YouTube. The Covenant Station. Awake Watchmen! We are set to stretch again in prayer to secure a tangible supply of the Spirit with which we can drown the world with the knowledge of the glory of God. Join us at this month's edition of Incubate, a six-hour prayer vigil for the young kings and priests of the Covenant Nation. Date is Friday, 19th April 2024. Time, 10 p.m. Venue, The Covenant Nation, Yaba, 400 Habat Macaulay Way, Jibo. Please note that registration is required at bit.ly forward slash incubate hyphen vigil. A new season is upon us. A kingdom of priests is rising. An exceeding great army. Come join us.
We are excited to announce that applications have opened for the 2024 cohort of the Platform Young Professionals Bootcamp. Are you between the ages of 20 and 25? Here is your chance to access mentorship and skills that will take your career and craft to the next level. Start your application today at www.youngprofessionalsng.com. Calling all church members interested in career advancement. Are you ready to take your professional journey to the next level? Join us for an empowering masterclass hosted by the Covenant Capital to prepare for the upcoming career fair on 25th May 2024 at the Covenant Place in Gomu. Mark your calendars for Saturdays, April 27th, May 4th and 11th, 2024 as we delve into crucial topics to boost your career prospects. Learn how to optimize your LinkedIn profile, network effectively, upskill for success, ace interviews and craft standout CVs. Don't miss this opportunity to gain invaluable insights and skills that will set you apart in today's competitive job market. Secure your spot now by registering at fair.covenant-capital.org. For baby naming and child dedication, kindly visit the information desk to get the registration links. If you would like to get the audio CD of today's sermon or any of our programs at the Covenant Nation, kindly place an order by sending a WhatsApp message to the media office on 0814-000-0224. Audio CDs are produced on an order basis only. Download all messages for free at elibrary.insightsforliving.org. Also, stream via Spotify, Apple Podcasts and Google Podcasts by simply searching for Insights by the Covenant Nation. Follow or subscribe and listen. Remember to send your feedback to respond at covenantchristiancenter.org because at the Covenant Nation, we love feedback. Connect with us on all our social media handles to stay updated at Covenant C Center at Pastor Kwaju on Instagram, Facebook and X. God bless you and have a productive week ahead. Start your day with our corporate prayers and declarations. Join us online every morning at 5 a.m. West African time via www.mixler.com forward slash covenant. Our online midweek services at the Covenant Station are a refreshing time of fellowship with God in worship and an in-depth study of His Word. Join us online every Wednesday as we recharge and receive all that heaven has prepared for us. Time is 6.45 p.m. West African time via www.mixler.com forward slash covenant and 7 p.m. on Facebook and YouTube. The Covenant Nation. Away!